How's it going, everyone? Just want to share my newest purchase. Got a new trailer and a nice pile of green touch racks off of my other trailer. Uh, if you've been following me at all, I had a single axle uh, six and a half by 10 foot trailer. Uh, typically, that's all I need for mowing. I just mow with my, my walker mower. I only do 30 or so lawns a week, a couple days of mowing. Uh, makes up about, I don't know, 15, 20% of my actual uh, work that I do. But I do love it, and I enjoy it, and I love the walker mower. Uh, I may actually pick up a second mower. I've been talking about it for years, haven't done it yet. Uh, but I might pick up a stander like a 36 or something in that uh, area just for some lawns that I don't have to catch. And uh, nice to have for backyards and stuff. So it'd be nice to have a bigger trailer. The 10-footer was just enough. I had, you know, all my gear on in the in the walker, just enough for a nice little mowing, you know, solo or semi-solo operation. Uh, the reason that I went with a larger uh, dual axle trailer is because of this. Uh, so I do have an uh, enclosed trailer, too. I've got a dual axle enclosed trailer that I don't really use. Uh, it's kind of parked in the back and um, kind of prefer the open trailers. So the reason I bought this is it allows me to move the bobcat around uh, when I'm doing different jobs and whatnot. just gives me a little more versatility, uh, and I can also mow with it. Uh, the cool thing about having a large, larger trailer than I need for one mower is I can dump the walker and all the grass clippings up in the front here. I've had quite a few trailers in the past that I've done. I've done that too. I've even I even had a trailer similar to this that I had a uh, dump insert, a six foot dump insert that I mounted on the front and had it dump like this, so you could back the walker up and dump into it and uh, get rid of the grass clippings that way. But what I'm planning to do with this one is not that. Uh, it's just going to be the single mower for now, and uh, with the extra space, I am going to mount all the racks and everything on there, make this a nice mowing trailer, and it will have the capability to be able to move the bobcat if need be. So this is only a uh, 7,000 GVW trailer. It's not a 10 or a 12 or a 14,000. Uh, so it's actually just going to uh, be enough for the bobcat. The bobcat weighs 4,700 pounds, uh, maybe up to 5,000 pounds, and this is rated at 5,500 uh, carrying capacity. The trailer weighs 1,500, GVW is 7,000. So it's pretty much maxing it out, putting the bobcat on here. Uh, I don't really go far with it anyways, so it'll still be legal and proper. However, you know, if you were going to drive 100 miles every day with a bobcat on a trailer on the highway, I would probably want something a little heavier duty. But just your regular uh, standard five lug wheels, uh, you know, two thirty five hundred pound axles. Uh, the build of the trailer is decent. Uh, it's not the best I've seen. It's not the worst I've seen. Somewhere in the middle, uh, it does have this uh, big square tube top rail. Uh, it does have some decently spaced uh, supports underneath. Uh, it has a pretty nice gate with quite a few uprights. Uh, it's got a pretty nice latching, latching system that you pull out. It does have the uh, supports right there for the center of the ramp when you put it down and it does have spring assists i don't know if you can see that under here spring assists that actually work really nice uh, so i may have to strengthen this gate up a little bit i'm not sure yet i'm going to uh, pull the bobcat up and see if it starts to flex i'm sure i'm sure it'll be fine the way it is taking it nice and easy going up there not going nuts on it you know, bouncing up and down in the middle of it. Um, but, I, you know, through time, it probably will start to bend it. Uh, so I don't know for now, maybe if I'm just going to take like a a uh, six by six or something and put it across down here. So when I put the gate down, uh, it will actually end up resting and supporting the center of this gate when I do pull the machine up onto it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it is if it... Uh, if it seems like it's going to hurt it or not. The way I, I measured it out, it looks like the wheels are going to go right over two of these uh, two-inch two uh, angle irons. So there'll actually be two of those supporting each wheel on each side as you go up. So we'll see. I haven't loaded the Bobcat yet uh, because I am going to uh, Thompson's water seal the stuff right here. I'm going to put that on the deck. Uh, it's a great treatment to put on a new trailer you just want to make sure it's nice and dry this is dry it's been out in the sun for a few days 
and uh, it'll help preserve the wood and make it last a little longer. And it's also nice if you spill oil, or grease and stuff on it. Uh, it helps so it doesn't penetrate into the wood very deeply. It pretty much just sits on the surface and you're able to clean it up decent. And, you know, having a bobcat, there's always going to be some little bits of wood. Well, I shouldn't say having a bobcat. Having any skid steer of 10 years or older usually at any given point can blow a hose or spring a leak. So I want to be prepared for that. If I do have a leak on the trailer, I don't want to have uh, oil soaking into the wood. So, yeah, we've got this... Uh, C channel frame, nothing spectacular. Like I said, it's not it's not the strongest trailer in the world. It's not the weakest trailer in the world. Uh, it's it's gonna be just enough. You know, you've got your uh, your uh, battery for your breakaway. I don't know if it has uh, electric brakes on both axles or just one. I'm actually gonna look underneath there right now. Yeah, we got it on the back axle. Yep. Okay, so all four wheels uh, do brake. So it has uh, brakes on both axles. So what do we got for tire size? We've got a Good Ride ST600 trailer tires. No idea if these things are any good. I'm going to guess that they're not. Uh, the used trailer market is ridiculous right now. People were asking what I paid for this new, for a used trailer trailer of this size. Uh, I did want it to be landscaping first. I want to have it set up with my racks and have a really nice landscaping trailer out of it. Uh, that's its main purpose, but it's nice to have the capability to move the Bobcat. Uh, so, you know, just gives you that uh, other option, you know, when you're going from job to job. You never know. It's nice to have options in which you're going to put it in, you know, whether it's going to be the dump trailer or whatever. So, but yeah, these are 15-inch uh, tires. And uh, like I said, five lug wheels. I'm going to re retorque these uh, lug nuts. You're supposed to do it after like 50 miles of driving it or whatever. So I'm going to do that while it's down here. I'm going to go ahead, like I said, coat this. And I'm going to mount up all my racks. I've got my two gas can holders, uh, backpack blower rack. And then I've got my three-place trimmer rack. Uh, that'll be going on as well, and uh, that'll be it. Get it all outfitted, and we'll get it out to uh, get it out there mowing. So, be using it tomorrow. So, I'll be here for a couple hours getting this outfitted tonight. Uh, it's got LED lights that you guarantee these things are going to be busted off in no time. Uh, yeah, they stick out beyond the metal, there's no protection. Luckily, they are back a little bit, and they're tucked in pretty good, so maybe they will survive a little bit. But um, for those wondering where I got this, I bought this at Tractor Supply Company. Uh, I usually would never buy a trailer from Home Depot, Lowe's, Tractor Supply. They're usually pretty cheap, uh, cheaply made, although I have been impressed with some of the things that I've seen from them lately. But um, the reason I did is the price was right, and it, they had it in stock ready to go. And again, like I said, the, the used market for what I was seeing out there, people are asking more than I paid for this. Uh, it's a carry-on brand. And uh, the person on the phone misquoted me by $800. Uh, told me this was $800 less than it actually was once I got down there. They tried to charge me the $800 more, and I said, what's going on? This is ridiculous. Uh, you know, it's not what you quoted me on the phone. And we spoke with the manager, and we came to a agreement of basically $100 more than they quoted me. So I got this for $700 less than what anybody else would have paid for this, uh, which I thought was really good. So that's my latest and greatest trailer. Uh, while I'm here, let me show you uh, a little bit update on the bobcat i did pick up a used bucket like i said i was going to uh it came with the 48 inch the four foot bucket uh this is just a used uh 54 i think it was i want to measure it so i do know it is oh come on yeah 54 inside 55 and a half outside so that's a perfect profile for this machine you see it, it just is going to cut and the wheels stay within within that pattern within the uh within the line 
So uh, all I've really done to this, I haven't done any uh, repainting yet. I did uh, buy some metal and I rebuilt the uh, heater box here, not the upper part there that you see with the two holes up there. I rebuilt this. Uh, I bought a piece of uh, 16 gauge metal, bent it all to the factory specs. It's got the heater core in it with the hoses that run in. Uh, it's all hooked up and working. Uh, you can see these deep scratches right there right here are because when I made it, I made it probably a quarter of an inch bigger this way than the original box. And when you pull down this lap bar, it hits right there. Just goes right by it. It barely hits it, but it does scrape. So I took my time and painted it all up nice. Uh, I took this this uh, vent is a, a metal vent that goes under the seat. I took all that out, cleaned it all up in there, uh, sprayed things down that were rusty. And uh, over here, I took the filter housing off and uh, cleaned up and repainted this area that was rusty. Got it all looking really nice. And the first time I got in it and put the lap bar down, it scratched the crap out of that top of the box there. So no big deal. It is what it is. I just got to make a little adjustment or whatever, and I'll throw a little more paint on there so it doesn't rust. But uh, other than that, I did clean up in here down where the footwells are and whatnot. And uh, looking pretty good down in there. Seat's looking good. So not a bad machine. Like I said, needs a good paint job. And uh, But other than that, we're looking, uh, we're looking pretty good with it. It's going to be out on a job soon. I'll have some videos of that pretty soon. I figured why not show you guys a little bit of the process of the Thompson's water seal. Well, I've done this to probably eight or nine of my trailers I've had over the years. And it does uh, extend the life of the, uh, the lumber, like I said. It's definitely a good thing to do. It doesn't take much time at all, as you'll see how quick it is. I just got a little roller there. Just lay it on heavy. That's one coat. I usually put two coats on. I'm running low on what, what I have left in that bucket, so I might not have enough to do two coats, but I'm going to try. We'll see. But you can see I already did half of it. I'll go ahead and set you up, and I'll, uh, I'm just going to roll out another board and show you uh, how simple it is and how quick and easy it is uh, to, to go on. All right, even if I only get one coat, one coat's better than no coats. I've got enough probably to fill up this little container maybe three more times. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'll focus on the center and do probably the center four boards and get a second coat on that. Since that's the area that if you have something parked on there, typically it would drip. And, uh, you know, oil stains and stuff will probably be in the center because uh, most likely that's where it end up. So I want to have that as good as I can. 
I'm not going to go out and buy some more. Uh, I had it. I just wanted to use it up. And uh, this was a perfect use for it and a good time to do it right when you first buy it. You could do this to an old trailer too if you uh, power wash, clean up your uh, deck really good if it's in good shape and uh, let it dry. It's got to be really dry when you do this and then go ahead and uh, give it a, a nice coat of waterproofing. So uh, like I said, it does definitely help and stops the water, especially if you leave your trailer outside like in the winter. Uh, what will happen is the water will... will uh, get down into the cracks of the wood it'll penetrate the wood and then it freezes and actually pushes the fibers of the wood apart and that weakens the wood but this is what it is uh, clear multi-surface prevents moisture damage exceeds industry industry waterproofing specifications could use this stuff on brick and i believe cement also it's basically just a, a sealer that you can use on most anything but uh you don't need much. I mean, uh, one gallon would probably do two trailers. It's probably about a half gallon per. Got a little bit on the fender here. I'm gonna wipe that off. And as far as I know, it doesn't hurt the paint. It's just kind of like a, a clear coat, so. But, uh, all right, let me uh, see if we can get some racks on and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, the more I go over this trailer, getting it set up, the more I'm finding um, issues or shortcomings of uh, production. Now, <clears throat> this uh, this trailer is made by Carry On, which I know is a supplier for, I believe, also Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, this is the company here. And uh, not to put them on blast here, but as I'm going through, uh, just looking things over, I noticed a lot of bare metal, a lot of areas that didn't get sprayed or painted. Uh, I'm noticing a lot of areas. Uh, now, I've touched it up since. You might be able to tell it's a little bit shiny in some areas. I've put about two, uh, two, cans of, two full cans of uh, Rust-Oleum Gloss Black. Uh, the reason I'm touching these areas up, uh, not so much to you know, keep it black, it's to stop the rust from happening. You don't want uh, bare metal because then it, you know, with this trailer outside, it rains and it rusts. So uh, there was a lot of areas that when you pull the gate down that weren't painted like in here, uh, a couple of, uh, quite a few places that were missed, uh, like this whole area in here was missed. Most of the backsides of all this angle, you can actually see right here. It's very, very thin there. Almost, hopefully it shows up on camera. It almost looks like it's white. You can see the, the light gray primer underneath it. So there's a lot of this. I saw that all over the place. Uh, and when there, where there is paint, uh, it's runny, 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 really, really bad. This isn't me. I didn't do these runs. This is, this is, was here. Uh, you can see nice big runs here. Uh, the whole side, big runs. Uh, you know, so they definitely uh, don't take super pride in their trailer building. Uh, you know, I'm not surprised. They probably bang out a lot of these things and they sell them in high volumes, you know, where they're dealing with tractor supply companies and Home Depots and all that stuff. Um, but knowing that if the price is right, it's not that bad. I mean, metal is metal. Um, as far as the welds go, I am happy with that. All of the joints where everything connects, are completely welded. They're not just, you know, uh, stitch welded here, 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 you know, and just kind of, uh, there's there's no lack of welding all the way around, everywhere you go, every everywhere, obviously not this whole fender. We've only got a couple of welds to hold that up right, right up there. But like across here, there's just a couple of spots. But um, these, these uh, uh, what are they, uh, stake pockets, uh, fully welded, you know, like this is fully welded, um, welded here, underneath, here, here, in here, fully welded, uh, all surfaces that they can. Same thing with the gate. I've seen a couple of the trailer manufacturers that they'll just spot weld, uh, like one, one side, the other side, maybe one in the middle. Um, and they won't even do the other side. They would just do one side. Uh, this, both sides are welded all the way around where all these connect, where each one of these angles connect in here, it's welded on both sides completely, fully. Now, that's the most important thing to me is the structure. Um, if you look up under here, 
welded, welded, complete welds, okay? And if you look on the inside, I think you can see some more primer. Yeah, you can see like down in there, you can see some gray uh, that wasn't painted, but I don't know if this back side, yeah, it looks like this back side is not welded. Nope, it's not. So just, just this side is welded on these uprights, but everything else I've seen is welded on both sides. But again, fully welded, not just touched. Uh, you can see like areas down in here with paint missing. That's not that big of a deal. I'm not surprised. Um, but like I said, I saw straight up, uh, where was it? Uh, like these pockets here had literally no paint. It was already starting to rust. There was a couple of backsides of these that were pretty much bare. Uh, so... So far, uh, my opinion is the trailer is built decent. I, I would give it a, you know, a B minus as far as its build quality. Uh, you know, it seems to be a good solid trailer that will last some time. Uh, it's not chintzily made, if that's a word. Um, but, you know, all the things around it, like the, uh, you know, quality control after the fact and, the, uh, you know, making sure that the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, uh, I'm not happy with as far as like the paint and stuff like that. So uh, <clears throat> I haven't even tried the lights yet. We'll see how those work. Um, I'm anticipating there's probably going to be a couple of those broken. Maybe not. They're LEDs, uh, but there's a lot of lights on this. So it wouldn't surprise me if I have an issue on some or all or any of the lights. Uh, but we'll go ahead and hook those up and try those out at some point. But if you consider one of these trailers, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that all their trailers, all their different sizes are made very similar to this. They got the same style gates. You know, they've got the single axle, the 10 footers, the 12 footers. Uh, this is a 14 foot, if I haven't mentioned yet. This is a 14 by uh, six and a half, I think it is, or 14 by seven. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, like, see up there where it's not painted? Uh, this weld right here was completely bare and not painted. Uh, those are important things. Uh, easy enough to touch up. Grab a, a can of Rust-Oleum, like I said, touch them up, put a couple of coats on them, and that'll stop all that stuff from rusting in the future. Uh, but And that's a good thing to have uh, any of your trailers in the future. Just kind of once a year or twice a year, go over it with a little spray can and touch up. Uh, trailer dealers do that. Like if... A smaller company was buying these carry-on trailers, uh, you know, that wasn't a large company like Tractor Supply Company. They would get a shipment of, say, they got, you know, 15 trailers in or whatever on a truck. Uh, th their job as a representative is they basically do the quality control, you know, once it's delivered on the spot. Because they're going to get a little scratched up here and there in transport. So at that, that's the point when they hit the ground at the dealer, at the, uh, you know, the, uh, the sales place that's going to sell the trailer. That's when they kind of do their checks and go through, check the you know wheel torques and make sure all the lights are working and then go and then they actually go around with with a touch up can of paint and basically do what I just did. They look at you know any of those bare areas. So there may be this may be very common with a lot of different companies, and um, I'm just getting the trailer after the dealer that sells it to me has already kind of touched up these areas, uh, so it might not be that uh, that rare, uh, but. Again, if you if you got if you guys buy one of these uh, from from that company, uh, like I said, um, you know this carry on that's Tractor Supply, Home Depot, and Lowe's, I believe, <clears throat> um, definitely uh, something to keep in mind. You may want to, if they have more than one in stock, you may want to, you know, look, look look at a couple of them. You know, see, uh, you know, one one might be built by uh, Fred, and the other one was built uh, was was uh, built by, you know. Uh, Mike and Tom that are goofing off in the corner and, uh, you know, they forgot to, you know, paint this or paint that or whatever. So <clears throat> this is just my experience with the one that I've got. Uh, and I just wanted to share it with you guys in case uh, you're considering buying one of these. So other than that, though, I've been pretty happy with what I've seen as I'm looking around. Uh, you know, the wiring seems to be run good. It's in nice tubes along uh, the chassis. It's not actually underneath where it's going to drag. I kind of like that. I've never really seen that done. I don't know if that's kind of a, a cheap way out or what, because you've got those uh, two little tubes here that are up on the surface. In my opinion, I like that. I, I like to be able to see where the wires are and be able to work on them without having to get underneath where all the road grime is. Uh, so we'll see how that holds up, because uh, you know that's gonna those things are gonna take a beat and getting hit with 
you know, equipment running into them. So hopefully they're stout enough and not, uh, not going to break. So they do seem like they're welded in quite a few areas just for that. So, but yeah, I just wanted to update, update on that. And uh, let's go ahead and get these racks put on. All right. And there's the finished decking. Got a second coat. I was able to put a second coat on the second coat kind of, uh, it doesn't soak in near as much as the first. Just imagine a sponge being completely dry and then you put a layer of water on it. It's really going to absorb in. And then when you put a second layer of water, it's not going to take as much to be able to, you know, roll off the top. So the second coat, uh, I ended up probably using about half as much as what I uh, put in the first coat. It ended up just like kind of dripping down the sides of the, the boards, which is only going to seal it better, which is no big deal. Uh, but I used up all the rest that I had in there. It actually worked out perfect to get a good couple of couple of coats on there. And that's, like I said, the finished look there. Just uh, kind of darkens the wood a little bit. And uh, once it dries, it'll have that repellent, almost like a wax on top of the wood surface that will uh, stop uh, penetrating into the wood. So uh, I kind of laid out my green touch racks. I've got the three-piece trimmer rack. I think at the beginning of this video, I already explained all the different ones that I have. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm just, to be honest, I'm not, Danny Lanier, you'll love to hear this. I'm not super happy with this whole green touch thing. I'm not sure if I don't end up, you know, it kills me to buy all new racks when I have a full set of racks. Um, it also kills me to spend any time trying to make these look any better. Uh, they, you know, these things are. They get all moldy and nasty and spotty and like this rubber coating gets sticky and you can't really just repaint them. I'd have to strip the plastic. I mean, I guess I could repaint the trimmer racks, but there's so many little details on it. I wouldn't even want to deal with that. It wouldn't be worth the time and effort to do that. So it's kind of like use them as is on a brand new trailer, you know, drilling holes and everything or get different racks or new racks. I'm not sure. Uh, this blower rack's a perfect example of how this top just completely discolors and it turns into this gooey mess. Uh, you know, I do like the functionality of the, the racks, but they're, they're finished. I know that uh, they've done some changes over the years, but uh, I know that that big gas can holder, that's fairly recently. I got that about a year ago. Uh, you can tell it's definitely greener than the small one that's inside of it, but... Geez, I think I even bought both of those at the same time. One has the newer coating and the older coating that actually uh, turns color or fades really easily. But this blower, I mean, these are, these things may be two years old. And a lot of time I had this trailer, I had my landscaping trailer inside. I didn't even leave it outside all the time. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know on the racks if I'm going to end up. I think for now I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm going to run without them. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about is pulling the machine, the uh, bobcat up here. I, I want to kind of use it a little bit and see where the bobcat's going to rest when I tie it down and kind of maybe uh, set up the tool racks so it's not going to affect, you know, there's not going to be a chance of the bobcat running into them, you know, if I end up overhanging them into the trailer a little bit. Uh, the other thing I might do is <clears throat> I would drill holes in through bolt with carriage bolts into the last trailer. But I know these racks are set up where you can take like uh, U-bolts that actually like will straddle the frame and then come up and then you can bolt it down and then you don't have to drill it. And the other cool thing about that is you can uh, loosen them and slide them and move the racks where you need to where you need to put them. Uh, I think the trimmer racks are the exception in this hand tool rack, but the blower rack and the two gas can racks, I know uh, you can use that U-bolt setup. So I think I might do that. I might grab some U-bolts and at least put those on with that. And uh, we'll see on the trimmer rack. Like I said, I'm not sure where I want to put it yet. That's going to probably do it for this video, guys. Uh, new trailer. I'll have an update on what I end up doing about the racks and... Uh, I'm gonna, I got three bobcat jobs waiting, so I'm going to uh, get this thing out there and uh, tow it around on that trailer and see how it works out, see if it's uh, sufficient for what I need. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.